In this video, I'm going to show you how to effectively use core option override files. And these files are used when we want to deviate from our defaults, but we don't want those changes to affect every single game. And we can do this on a content directory basis or a per game basis. Now these are not to be confused with configuration override files, as these are for your main RetroArch settings. And I have covered that in another video that I'll put in the description below. To ensure that your content specific core options are being used when a game is started, you need to go over to the settings tab here, go down to configuration and make sure that your load content specific core options automatically is on. Then from here, just start the game that you wish to configure for. I'm just going to use this one with Flycast as an example. So just start that one up. And as soon as the game starts up, you want to go into the quick menu and then you want to go down to core options. So obviously in this menu here, you've got the options that you can actually change. But at the top here, we've got manage core options. So if we take a look in here, we can see which options file is currently being used. And we also have the ability to save game options or save a content directory option. Now saving a specific game options file is pretty self-explanatory. It will just apply any changes to that specific game. However, with content directory options, it works a little bit different. Now content directory basically means the folder in which your games are located. So this comes in handy for cores that run multiple platforms like Flycast here. It runs Dreamcast, Naomi 1 and 2 and Atomis Wave games. And I personally want to have different options for all four of those platforms. And because all of those games are in different folders, I can do that with this option here. So in a nutshell, this option here will save and apply any changes to your core options to every single game that reside in the same folder as the game that you have currently loaded. So because I have a Sega Dreamcast game loaded and it's in a folder called Sega Dreamcast, it will save an options file called Sega Dreamcast and it will only be applied to those games. So if I save content directory options, you'll see that the active option file has changed to Sega Dreamcast. And you can delete that out with this option here. And if I save a game options file, you can see that it's changed it to the title of the game. And you can delete that out of here as well. Now, one thing that you do need to keep in mind is that no matter the active options file that has been used, it will always automatically save to that specific options file when you exit the game. RetroArch will prioritize using these in the following order. Firstly, it will look for a per game options file, then a content directory options file, and if it can't find either of those, it will just use your core options file. Now, my recommendation is that you make any changes to your main core options file first. And these are changes that you want to make to every single game, which is most commonly resolution. Just keep in mind, the core options file is only ever saved when you exit a game. So after you've made all of your core adjustments, make sure you exit before you then go back in and make any per game or content directory adjustments. As for the location of these files, if you go into the config folder of RetroArch, then find the folder which is named after the core that you're using. And then you can see you've got your options file there and all option files are saved to this location. There we go. That was a quick overview on how to use core option override files. Now I've already done a video covering main configuration override files and I'll put a link for that video in the description below so check that out. And if I saved you some time today, give me a thumbs up. And if you wanna keep up to date, you know what to do. And apart from that, go play some games. Adios.